Okay, so spring is just around the corner here in the Northern Hemisphere. So here are 16 free spring themed projects that you can get done in the next few weeks, just in time for Easter. So welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. Now, as I mentioned in the opening to this video, we're heading into the Northern Hemisphere's spring at the moment. So I've picked out some spring themed projects that are all freely available on the internet um, for you to access and to make. I've split them into two groups. The first half of the list are fabric themed projects, so sewing, quilting, embroidery, that kind of thing. And the second half are knitting and crochet, so more sort of fibre themed. So without any further ado, let's take a look at these fabric based projects. These are all ideal scrap busting projects and um, so recycling old clothes using up leftovers from projects that you made that kind of thing the first one we're going to take a look at is from the sewing loft blog and it's always in bloom so it's a bouquet of fabric flowers you'll be able to see it on the screen here it's a fairly simple project uh, you're essentially making the flowers and attaching them to twigs to make a bouquet of flowers which would be a lovely gift for uh, Mother's Day, because we have Mothering Sunday coming up here in the UK, um, or just an Easter gift or a spring gift. You could even use them if you've got a wedding coming up as bouquets for the bride and the bridesmaids. So yeah, lots of uses for this, and it's going to use up a, fa a reasonable amount of, of scraps and leftover fabrics for you, as well as uh, you can find the twigs out in the, the wilds of suburbia, wherever you are, um, to make this project. I think it'll be a really, really nice, pleasant gift to, to make an easy, simple project to whip up for your own home if you chose to. Project two is on the Gathered website. Now, Gathered um, is it's like an umbrella website for lots of different crafting magazines that are available here in the UK. Um, they used to have a magazine called Molly Makes, but that has ceased publication. Uh, but all of their patterns and pr projects and the, the free stuff that came with that magazine are still available through Gathered. Um, so they do knitting, sewing, quilting and all sorts. Now, the particular project that I've found for this video on that website is the butterfly patchwork tote. So it's a well, patchwork, patchwork butterfly tote, whichever way around you want to say it. That's designed by Susie Bellingham. It's a couple of years old now, the, the design, but it still works. It's still fine. It's still available. And you could easily adapt it into a different motif once you've got the idea of how it goes together. Great for busting those scraps as, uh, again, be good for small scraps that are left over from projects um, or for if you've got any pre-cuts um, from quilting that didn't go into a project, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, nice little handy tote. Um, obviously you can size it up if you want to as well, make a bigger one, make a shopping bag out of it. So yeah, a really nice, simple, quick project. Project three is sticking with a the theme of butterflies. So we have this piece of wall art, this sort of a nice 3D element to this one as well. So it's quite a simple design using the butterflies to create a heart. The original design um, is on the Amy Smart Diary of a Quilter website. So the original design uses these rainbow coloured butterflies um, on a plain background to create a 3D shape. Um, and you can obviously adapt that to whatever colour scheme you want. You could change the shape that they're in. And again, once you've worked out how to do it, you could adapt the butterflies into something else. It would look equally good with flowers, I think. Uh, so yeah, so a nice, simple project. Bit of decor for you. I think it would look good in a bedroom. I think it would look good in a nursery. Um, wherever you want, really. Uh, but those are the two places sort of leapt out to, to my mind. Uh, it's another one that's going to be easy to scale up if you want something larger as well. Project four something for the embroiderers. So Easter is coming up. We've got five weeks in the UK till the schools are out for um, Easter break. Um, so it's probably about six weeks till Easter itself. And um, so these ones are felt eggs that have been sewn together and stuffed and one side's been embroidered. So nice straightforward design, um, but all the instructions and the uh, pattern templates are available on um, etmdesigns.eu. Um, I will obviously be linking all of these in the description down below. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's a nice straightforward, fairly quick project actually. It'd be a good one to do of an evening or in a weekend or um, if you're going away on a train somewhere, something to do with your hands whilst you're, you're sitting waiting for your station. 
Um, so yeah, it's a nice little simple project there. And sticking with the theme of eggs, Pearl Soho also has, um, for the non-embroiderers out there, the heirloom wool Easter eggs. So very similarly, you've got uh, an egg shape that's been created, looks like it's felt, but then they've appliqued flowers and things onto it instead of embroidering. So good alternative if you're not an embroiderer. Next project is a, a project on Nana Company, which is on our type pad website. Um, so again, the, the, the blogger here is, is called Amy and it's a nice little fabric basket. Now it's been built as an Easter basket. And um, so for, for doing Easter egg hunts, that kind of thing. Um, but I think the, particularly in the fabrics that she's chosen for the example, it's a far more versatile project than that. I think this basket would look great all year round. And if you sized up or sized down, you can create a variety of, of baskets on a theme that would match each other. I think it would make a great little project basket for knitting and crochet projects or for English paper piecing, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it'd be really easy to, to size it to, to meet your needs as well. Uh, the next project that I have is a decor project. It's an interior decor project. It's incredibly whimsical and quirky. Um, but for those of us that are into that kind of thing, I present from pillarboxblue.com the homemade fabric birdhouse. It's adorable. Um, the pattern does call for you to use cardboard inside it, which is why I'm saying it's an interiors project. I wouldn't want to be putting that outside without changing the materials. Um, but I think it'd be a really good way to use up some of those larger scraps. And I think it'd be easily adapted to turn it into like a, a kid's toy uh, birdhouse. You could make it so that one of the sides opened up if you wanted to. I think it'd make a quirky little bit of uh, storage for, for, again, for projects. Uh, so yeah, it's really cute, really whimsical. Um, I don't know if I'll end up making one, but I am I'm quite attached to the idea of a fabric birdhouse. And keeping with that theme to go with your fabric birdhouse, of course, you are going to need some sort of bird. So here we have embroidered bird decorations from someoftheirstories.com. Um, so yeah, again, nice and simple, uh, padded 3D bird with an embroidered and appliqued design on one side of it that you can hang near your birdhouse. Um, so yeah, ever so cute. So that's my fabric based suggestions for spring themed patterns for you. So the next half are all knitting and crochet projects. Um, I'm using the Lovecraft link for all of these projects. None of the links down below will be to Ravelry. So for those of you that can't access that site, um, these are all off an alternative source. And we're going to start with the lovely Dot Pebbles. Um, Dot Pebbles is Claire Garland, and she is the lady who created the frog. Um, if you're not familiar with the frog, here is the frog. So cute. She's done it again. She's done an Easter bunny. How adorable is this? I have yet to make a Dot Pebbles pattern, but she's got a whole host of really cute knitted toys and dolls and lots of animals um, and yeah the, the frog pattern has really taken off um, I'm obviously a bit late to the party with the frog but I, I do intend to make one at some point um, but yeah she's got some very cute ones this Easter bunny just gives an idea of how realistic her patterns can be she's got the cutest realistic looking animal patterns out there and um, they won't use an awful lot of yarn to make up so you should be able to find something in your leftovers for, certainly for some of the smaller ones um, and there's also the option of using some of your scraps as stuffing. If you don't have toy stuffing um, or anything like that you could use your, your cut off ends um, once you've built up, if you save them you can build up a stash of them and um, all those little bits of leftover yarn that aren't quite enough to put into another project you could gather them together and start using them to supplement your, your toy stuffing if you don't have quite enough or instead of sto toy stuffing um all types as well you could use for for stuffing anything like that that you're no longer going to need as long as it's soft and you can get it into shape you can cut things down into to sh little strips and chunks and stuff to create filling if you need to it may not be so smooth as using the toy stuffing and you certainly wouldn't be able to sell it because uh when I passed all the safety checks that toy stuffing has to check to pass. 
Um, but if you're doing it for yourself, there's no reason why you can't use scraps to stuff a toy. Uh, so yeah, so adorable Easter bunny. Um, most people will need to buy the safety eyes for it that she's used in this particular design, but I think a lot of knitters will have something in stash that they can use, either from leftovers or minis or something to make the main part of the rabbit. The next project I have for you is another small, cute stuff. Uh, th there's a theme here. Lots of these are small, cute stuffed animal type things. Um, this project will be super, super quick. It seems to be very similar to the little bird that I knitted out of my Rosa Farm um, kit. Obviously, I haven't looked at the pattern side by side. I haven't compared the two. Um, but in the kit, when you're paying for the materials. Um, but this is the Bluebird of Happiness, and this pattern has been out for a while. It's a Sarah Elizabeth Kellner pattern, and they are very small, very quick. They don't take a lot of yarn. So yeah, scraps would be great for making these little birds. And if you've made the fabric birdhouse, they'd go great with that as well. <laughs> Not that I was attracted to a theme of things or anything whilst I was looking up things for this video. Um, but yeah, the birds are very quick to make, and they won't take a lot of stuffing either. Again, you can use scraps for stuffing if you don't have toy stuffing. Um, following on from that, we're going to have some crochet projects coming up. Uh, so first we have Studio Milanina. Now this is the honey bee pattern. It's an adorable little crocheted piece. Yeah. I don't think I need to say much more on that. A little bit of red, of uh, yellow, a little bit of black, a little bit of, of white, a little bit of pink for the cheeks. Yeah, that's cute. Um, so yeah, so tiny little project, it's not going to take you very long, very springtime themed. Okay, so next we have a very specifically Easter themed project. And I have a feeling that I may know someone who will be attracted to this project in particular. Fiberpunk, if you're watching, I present Googly Eyed Chicken Cream Egg Cozies. They look like tiny Muppets. Uh, the idea is that you make these up and you put your little individual cream egg type thing or galaxy egg or whatever little egg shaped tiny gift you know the ones i mean and um, put them in inside use them as a gift um to hand out a little chocolate egg i think these are adorable i can see lots of kids loving receiving their eggs in this kind of thing uh, i can see little kids playing with these afterwards as well and um, yeah very very cute and again suitable for very little amounts of, of scrap yarn uh, to create those in a similar vein less easter specific but again crocheting with lots of little bits of yarn so great for scraps mini humpty dumpties this is a crochet pattern it's by crochet at terry's and um, now when i was a little girl Father Christmas asked my mum to knit me a Humpty Dumpty. He was about this big. I may still have him in a box upstairs. If I get, if I manage to find him, I will show you him at some point. It won't be this video, but at some point. Um, Father Christmas can't knit, apparently, so he had to ask my mum to do it. Uh, so Humpty Dumpty has a, a special place in my heart anyway. Uh, but these little mini Humpty Dumpties. Oh, so sweet. Oh, so cute. Uh, and they're not going to take very long to do either. So, yeah, nice little quick project. Great for gifts, great for uh, table decorations, uh, great for in a nursery as well. For the next pattern, we're sticking with crochet. This is a bit more spring themed than Easter themed. And we have May the Flower. Now, this cute little uh, doll. She reminds me of the Kakechi dolls. Um, so she's got this, these nice long eyes and that sort of almost conical shape. It's not exactly like a Kakechi doll, but that's kind of the vein that, that she's in. Um, and she's got this lovely petal skirt and a lovely petal scrunchie in her hair. So a really nice sort of spring crochet project. Again, it's going to be great for using up scraps. You can easily customise it for uh, any child that you wanted to, to give them to by changing the skin colour, changing the hair colour, make them look like the child that you're giving it to, or the adult. I'm sure there are plenty of adults who would appreciate a made the flower as well. Um, so yeah, very versatile, very good for scraps. And um, we have a functional project next. 
Again, it's crochet. Again, it's good for little tiny amounts of scraps. Uh, it's by Ternura Amigurumi, and it's a crochet flower pendant. So you're crocheting the beads, you're crocheting the flower and attaching them to a key ring loop. So a nice practical project. You could use it as decoration on a handbag, you could use it as decoration on a project bag, or you could use it for your keys. Um, so yeah, so nice, quick and easy. And again, it's not gonna use very much of any of those colors. So great for scrap busting. Now my final number 18 uh, project comes with a bit of a bonus. We'll get to that in a second. So Amanda Berry has created a beehive egg cozy. Oh, very sweet. Um, I can see that being really nice on a breakfast table. Uh, it's not going to take long to make it up. You're not going to need very much yarn. She's done the sample in a yellow, but you could equally do it in a, uh, a beige or a brown or a red, make it look like it's been painted. Um, so yeah, really nice little project, really sweet, really functional. I like the fact that it's got a loop on the top to, to take the cosy off. Quite often egg cosies don't have anything to take them off at the top. Um, so when the egg's still hot, it's going to be warm through the through the wool. Um, so yeah, so I think that's that's a nice little touch, having the, the loop there. And as a bonus, Amanda Berry has also done a beehive tea cosy. So you could do that in the set, you could knit out the tea cosy and then use the leftovers from the tea cosy to make the egg cosy. Um, obviously the tea cosy is going to use a bit more yarn, so it's a little bit less scrap friendly if you wanted to do it all in one colour. Um, I love the fact that on both of these projects she's attached little bee buttons to them and it's a really nice touch. Um, so yeah, so that is 18 scrap friendly, leftover friendly projects suitable to make for spring plus one bonus. Um, so yes, I hope you found that interesting and useful and you may find the video that's up on the screen now also interesting and useful.